Welcome everybody at Vodafone Firestarters. We are an on and offline platform for innovation and inspiration. Next to me is my co-host Peter Leverink. He's the creative director of Individuals. And we're going to talk today about future fabrics with two great guests, Lucy McGray and Marga Weijmans. Um, if you want to follow the discussion, you can do it on Twitter through at FirestartersNL. Marga, you're a fashion designer, yes. obviously. Um, you opened uh, the Fashion Week on Wednesday, and yeah. we're going to see a little clip of your show right now. You can't say that you belong to me. Can you tell me something about this collection, your inspirations, where did it, where did it come from, what did it go about? Um, yeah, usually my collections are kind of a diary of my life or the diary of the life of my company. Um, I started um, my first couture collection with a, a collection called Debut, about uh, making your first couture collection. The second collection was Wonderland, retreating uh, into a, a fantasy world, escaping from a grim rea reality as a designer. Um, yeah, this collection is actually a statement like I'm uh, kind of an adult designer. I can handle a few things. My, my, I'm, I'm, uh, I have uh, clear goals now. Um, it was a kind of 3D. Um, uh, business plan and the, the the things the the installations they walked on what is the, what is the thought behind that um, it, it has m multiple layers I think um, name one no, one <laughs> okay <laughs> so, sorry. Uh, somehow that I'm gonna do two or two. <laughs> somehow that that fashion is connected to the streets to your your urban surrounding mm -hmm. Um, uh, I, that I have a three-dimensional view of a woman walking in the street with clothes and with accessories. So I really literally wanted to chain some of the, the, the street of the city, wanted to, to frame the women in, in this kind of surrounding. Yeah, be because but there were like houses of iron right, or you yeah. could interpret it as them as houses. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw it more as a as a frame of the fashion system. Th yeah, a little that's, bit. A, that's one of the other layers. Ah. Is that that um, fashion somehow it has a hint of a fetishism and obsession in it because uh, one way uh, women are chained to fashion. Like I mean, from personal experience, also as a maker, that fashion can be a total obsession. Yeah, uh, as you may, may well know. Okay, Lucy, um, we're gonna see a little clip about your work. My name is Lucy McRae. I started this project two years ago when I was interested in developing materials made out of liquid, vapour and air. I wanted to create dynamic textiles that wrapped around the skin and traversed the landscape of the body. I showed Robin the tests I made and she absolutely loved them. We were discussing how um, technology are kind of these new feathers on our body so it made real sense that we should work together. I started in a real analogue way by wrapping tubes around a friend's body and one end of the tube would be inside her mouth and the other end of the tube would be inside the bucket and the speed was determined by how fast she was sucking or blowing. Can you tell me again uh, what is the concept about, about this dress, behind this dress? Yeah, I'm, I, I was interested in making textiles that aren't um, sort of traditional textiles and I was trying to make um, a, a blur around the body, like you can do in Photoshop, like you can feather, um, do a feather effect. And I was also trying to sort of um, blur the boundary of where the body ends and the environment starts. So I started working with garden hose sprinklers and then it, I saw the water going from the sink to the jets and then I turned it into the tubes. So that's how the project started. Can, can you name another uh, example of, of what, what other products do you do? Um, I um, 
I recently did a project for a swallowable perfume. Yeah. So it's a campaign about the idea of that you take a cosmetic pill and when you perspire, the, the fragrance comes through the skin surface so that your body becomes like an atom, atomizer. And I sort of feel that the skin is a, a potential accessory. Mm. How, do you, how do you call yourself? Uh, I call it body, a body architect. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I really resist being labelled something and I, I swerve any kind of label and I actually um, faked the name to get a job oh, really? at Philips Design. Yeah. <laughs> But um, it worked out. I got the job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so as a, as a body architect, you know, there's no kind of um, predetermined idea of what it can be so it lets me do whatever I want and yeah. I like that freedom. What are your main questions? Because it's, it's also <coughs> kind of a re big research project, it, it looks to me. Yeah, well, the, my creative process actually starts with a material. So I, I work almost similarly like a scientist, where I experiment with materials and I use the camera as a microscope. So I'm never really looking at a material without looking through a lens. Mm -hmm. And from there, the experiments, um, the, the experiments happen. Is there or should there be a connection with fashion? I... Um, As in I, I feel like I'm quite far away from fashion, actually. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that um, from the outside of people make references to fashion, but I, I feel like I'm maybe... I, I trained as a ballerina, so essentially I'm really interested in the body. Do you recognize the, the questions, uh, the work Lucy makes? Do you recognize something in your, in your, in your work? Yeah, the, the, um, when you're talking about the boundaries of the body and uh, the connection to the, to the environment, um, there are some elements I also investigate in my work, like where does the body end and where does the dress end and where does the environment begin mm. and um, I'm very much interested in mm. um, I, I always somehow start a design pro process by making like uh, black stains like kind of silhouettes I'm really into um, looking at a body from a distance and, and to see with one eye closed what kind of silhouettes I could mm. you know mm -hmm. shape mm -hmm. c c could you imagine yourself doing a catwalk show With your work? I actually um, took myself out for brunch this morning and um, wrote down that I would like to do one collection and one only. So All right. maybe you read my mind. Yes, <laughs> I think so. Good. Um, <laughs> next part of the show is Word on the Street. We ask you to, um, to, to look out for a news item that interested you. Um, Marga. Um, what, uh, what interests me right now is augmented reality. I also um, uh, use that te technology. I'm always interested in, in incorporating new technologies in my work. And augmented reality basically adds a new um, layer on top of reality. So with your iPhone, you download a, an app and then you can scan the environment and discover new new meanings in or new movies or mm -hmm. and only connected to that to that uh, particular mm -hmm. photo or space yeah. or because anything. next to your show yeah. there was a room in here on fashion week yeah. Yeah. where you could with your ipad or iphone could zoom in at a certain uh, element yeah. and um, you could see a story the story yeah. of how you make the collection yeah. Yeah. what is the first step you read books find inspirations yeah. and yeah. you saw this Through this iPad, actually, yeah, yeah. What, what is, what is the future? What I mean, for now, it's it's just looking. Yeah. But do you think how will this evolve for and for fashion? Um, that, what I'm really, I'm really investigating also right now. What what is the the possibilities and uh, what this technology is really um, like in, in in kind of in baby, how do you say? Yeah, it's, baby, it's kind of growing face. up. But one interesting thing is, is that you can um, you just you just can uh, conquer a certain space. Uh, for example, um, uh, a, a movie of my show was um, yeah printed on every front page of a Dutch mega, uh, yeah. Dutch newspaper the next day, 
I mean, if you if you didn't have the the app, you couldn't see it. But if you have the app, I was on the front cover, and it was ju- just hacking yeah, that yeah. cover. Yeah. So I like the the piracy uh, of the technology. It's I kind like of it a lot. And how how it would evolve? I think it's going to be a, a warfare of like graffiti artists, people annexating or conquering spaces to put their own a creative expression in a certain space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you work yeah. with augmented reality? No, I don't, but I think it's really interesting with the Google goggles, Google glasses coming out. Oh, what's that? It, they're aug- augmented reality glasses and um, and I feel like aug- aug- when I haven't used augmented reality, but I feel like when you go into an augmented reality space, you're entering into another world yeah. and you, you become a director, you become an editor, you can create your own fantasy, you're creating your own science fiction Hollywood film. But with these Google glasses, you never have to take them off. So you can be in that world permanently the whole time. You don't have to enter into reality anymore. You can be in that world the whole time. Yeah. And, and I think then, you know, what if those... Google glasses then become contact lenses, then this augmented reality is invisible and we don't know whether you're living in our world or another world. And for me, in terms of like science fiction and fantasy and as I I like creating alternative worlds, which clearly you do as well, I think then it becomes really interesting because no longer technology is being seen anymore. Lucy, you had also a word on the street, uh, a news item. What's that? It's a suit called Motive Pro by a guy in England and um, it's made up of a whole set of sensors which are placed on the body and they use them for Olympic gymnasts, swimmers. Yeah, this is a a picture of it here. It's pretty crude but um, I think it's really interesting because what happens is when her posture is not in a perfect position, there's a buzz on her back and it corrects her so she's going to look exactly like the other gymnast who is standing next to her and I think with the Olympics going on at the moment, I think it's really interesting this kind of attainment for perfection through technology. And if you think about this in terms of fashion, like you imagine vibration is like this magnetic field around the body. Like what if you could see that field? How do you see this imply on fashion? Apply on fashion? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I'm sure, the, the first thing I came to mind was like what if, if models walking on the runway somehow are, you know, like from a distance you can manipulate their poster or yeah. it's kind of creepy but I can, it's my mm. mind starts immediately starts to uh, mm. produce ideas we're going to go to the next part of the show and we'll yeah. talk about this more um, I have three premises for you and you can answer with yes or no and then after we can uh, get the discussion going yeah. um, the first um, <coughs> premise I'm first going to show you a little video So as a fashion designer, I've always tended to think of materials something like this, or this, or maybe this. But then I met a biologist, and now I think of materials like this. Green tea, sugar, a few microbes, and a little thyme. I'm essentially using a kombucha recipe, which is a symbiotic mix of bacteria, yeasts, and other microorganisms, which spin cellulose in a fermentation process. Over time, these tiny threads form in the liquid into layers and produce a mat on the surface. Working with textile is outdated. Yes or no? No. I don't think so either. Only only if it... Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, um, cotton is one of the one of the filthiest, uh, yeah, kind of textiles in the world. And if we can really c- can uh, cut down on to make it more cleaner, then I don't see any problem using it. And um, but can you ever? So I think from an ethical point of view, you should say yes, probably. That it's outdated. Yeah. But if it's if it's produced in a clean way, I don't see why it should be outdated. But 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 what do you, the, what's I mean, outdated? Yeah, what, what, what do you well, mean? Well, it's, it's a little bit old-fashioned, conservative. But I, I think, I mean, in my experience, for me, the challenge is to transform something. So if yeah. you say, okay, go away and transform cotton, I'm going to try and transform it into something that yeah. it well, has, you know, it, hasn't been seen before, into yeah. an, another, like, explode it or shatter it or shred it yeah, or yeah. whatever. Do you, do you ever work with textiles? 
Uh, well, I, I work with latex, which I, I consider a textile. Yeah. Pantyhose. I'm a big fan of pantyhose. Yeah. So, yeah, I do. But, but um, also the, 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 the question underneath is that all these things you're talking about and you are quite fashion forward. Isn't fashion uh, quite conservative when it comes to innovative materials or the innovative way of, of thinking? Um, in, in on one part, it's quite conservative, but there, there's a number of uh, developments. Like, I went to a leather producer, and the way they produce leather, the way they um, use waste, is so fashion forward. We, we don't know anything about their their production process. Yeah. Yeah. But so. other materials than textiles, you don't see on the catwalk. No, it's a matter of time, but I, I always have a problem with... Um, like uh, innovation and experimentation for its own sake. I'm a very yeah. fashion forward person, but the, the, my use of material or technology is always connected with the story or the concept. And I'm not a, a technology a pornographic, you know, it's not a feti fetish for me, like, mm -hmm. s like. Yeah, you need to be, yeah, okay. No, totally um, not. What is your favorite material no. to work with? At and the what, moment? Yeah. Jelly. Oh really? <laughs> what the, okay. And how and what? How does that go? Or what do you do with um, that? I like I like jelly at the moment because it's a powder. Yeah. Uh, and then when I add powder, heat, but you make it from powder. Yeah, like gel gelatin. They say. Oh yeah, yeah, in yeah, Dutch. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so I I like the fact that it's it's nothing. Like it, you can it, a wind comes and pff, it's gone. But if you add heat and water, I can make something hard and solid. Interesting. Yeah. And it, it goes from this small to this big, and it costs one euro twenty-five. <laughs> Very important. Very important. <laughs> and what 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 is what is? Do you have a specific design in mind? Where, where, where you're gonna do with this? I'm cloning humans with jelly at the moment. <laughs> but, but I can imagine that what, what you now tell as a joke, like I'm, um, you know, and the body fluids that it's like science fiction movies that that scientists would actually use it as a top model or experimentation, wanted to actually do it your kind of your way. Yeah. I mean, maybe your way lacks the, the, like the, the scientific uh, technology, yeah. but as, a, as an idea, it's very well, smart. So I, 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 feel I think, like why, would, why, why do we not implement it more? Because I'm sorry? Why do we not implement it more? It's still, we still talk about textiles in oh, the yeah, old-fashioned okay. way. We still talk about cotton, wool, etc. Yeah, well, that's what and I mean. Yeah, but from all perspectives, mm -hmm. it's bad in a way, ecologically, whatever. It's always bad. So if you have the chance to do something new, like when looking at your website, it's like, wow, fashion. Yeah. But still, well, we never see it. I think fashion is also a reflection of our zeitgeist, and I mm -hmm. miss that a little bit. Yeah. Now, nowadays in fashion. We're gonna go, we're gonna talk about this more, we're gonna go to the next mm -hmm. premise. The premise is the task of a fashion designer is to challenge the human silhouette. And we asked some visitors of the Fashion Week what they thought about that. I think that a designer has to, uh, the borders, to go over the borders, to do the impossible thing, not the usual thing. So sometimes it's great that a designer makes something that you look great in and it makes the forms and, 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 and your body really look great. I mean, that's what, that's, that's what they've been doing ever since Christian Dior did the new look. Uh, and before that, Paul Poiret had like the free form clothes and, you know, uh, they threw out the corsets. So that's their job, yes, to challenge the human form. It's nice to mess around with, uh, with the, the human body. I think it's one of the nicest things a designer can do. With the, they make new bodies, you know, that's really nice. I, I love it. So, yes or no? Uh, I would say, as a job, yes, but I, I, I'm not a fashion designer, so I don't know, but I would say that a fashion designer isn't thinking that that's their job when they're doing it. They're doing something more primal and, and intuitive when they're making. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the audience are expecting that. Yeah, so yes. Now we, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I would say yes as well, but uh, I, I also see it as a task to uh, manipulate not only uh, the human body or what, what the borders of the human body, but also man, kind of manipulate or uh, people's fantasy or manipulate perception of, of what fashion could be. Why can't fashion be a building? Or, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I would like to tell stories 
With fashion, and what, what uh, Lucy is saying is true. It's f very primal. I tell stories through fashion. It's something just comes very naturally from a young age. Mm -hmm. It's also yeah. there to provoke technology. Like a lot of technology is um, kind of the R and D behind technology is happening with you know amazing nerds and boffins and engineers, and they don't really know how that can you know, apply to the body in a beautiful kind of beautiful silhouette. So I feel that fashion design is there is also to provoke technology and how it can merge more clearly with our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Do you pay attention to, to, the, to the human silhouette in your designs? I mean, I, I experiment a lot with my own body. So um, it's, yeah, it's, that's kind of the silhouette that I use. But if at the, at the moment I'm moulding with jellies and submerging myself or mannequins, but what happens if, you know, I merged submerge someone in there who did have a prosthetic yeah. suddenly you have a leg and then you don't you, you don't have skin anymore you mm -hmm. have a machine and I think it's interesting when and I'm going off the topic here but what happens when skin and machine merge and, and yeah. how does that change the oh, so I, I have a video we get the best of both worlds the fastest reflexes modern technology has to offer onboard computer assisted memory and a lifetime of on the street law enforcement programming it is my great pleasure to present to you Robocop. This guy is really good. He's not a guy, he's a machine. All Detroit has a cancer. <laughs> cancer is crime. Let the woman go, you are under arrest. <laughs> you, you better back up, pal! Your move, <laughs> creep. Technology in fashion will make us cyborgs in the future. I hope not. No, well, yes or no? Technology in fashion will make us cyborgs. Technolo technology in fashion, yeah, will make us cyborgs in the future. Doesn't have to, no. I just, um, preparing for the show, I was also thinking cyborg and whatnot, but I, I, should, I always think you really should... Um, a human is a human, so you have human responsibility, human core values, universal values. These should be protected, and the machines are only there to uh, help us in a way. But don't you think in the future, as, and I hear you speak about all these materials and these goggles and everything, I mean, it would be a logical next step that we get half machine, because we have these things on our body all the time, because it w would be more convenient. Isn't that a realistic... Uh, uh, view on the future? I feel like the idea for me when I hear about wearable technology or cyborg, I cringe yeah, because it conjures up this horrible kind of idea in my head and I will, you know, I, I, I want to be polar opposite to that. Yeah, me too. I feel yeah. really, you know, it, maybe it's this intuition primal thing. But I, how I don't would wanna... you define then, uh, how, would you, how would you like to see uh, people dressing in, let's say, the year 3000? I, for me, it's not so much about how do I see that. For me, I think about liquid technology, like what would happen if we had shampoos where you could put it into your hand, put it in your hair, and then right now your hair is performing in front of me. It's invisible, there's no wires, there's no chunky cyborg-esque wearable technology kind of microphone thing. It's invisible and it becomes part of the body. Yeah. And yeah. for me, when... Well, but that's when also a definition of a cyborg, right? Well, in, for, for at least for Well, great. I, I <laughs> that is good. Okay. Yeah. Hey, listen, we have to wrap it up. I think maybe uh, a lot of people in the audience have some questions. Um, oh, I have also one final question for you, which is quite important. We're talking about all this new technology, which is really interesting and definitely on a fashion week, uh, I think so. Um, Young designers, you know, who just graduated, who are very innovative, you know, they're very new in their way of thinking. What could you advise them? How Keep could they use their techniques? How, how do they use this? I would say stick on what you want to do. If Do what you love, stick with your gut, go with your instinct, and don't move off that path. Yeah. No, okay, but, but that's very general advice, which is a, okay. a great <laughs> advice. No, but I mean, I mean, if there, I mean, I can imagine Sorry. there's a lot of, I can imagine there's a lot of young designers who wanting to work with, also with jelly. I mean, well, go the, way do you, it then. the way you talk to, <laughs> no, but technology, technology and fashion are two different worlds. And I can imagine yeah. as a young designer, you don't know where to start. So they call you? It, it's not, but I mean, 
rather not. Yeah. <laughs> where should no, they? Where they, should I mean they can call me? But the where way should that they I start? Work? Experiment. Yeah. Just experiment. Get a mobile phone. Take it to pieces. Put it in a bundle of whatever yeah, you want and see what happens. Yeah. yeah when but when, the thing when is, you're what, when you're your, te- your teacher. Yeah. So I think I know what you mean because the difficulty is that students don't see it like that. Technology is. Far, far, far away. I think piggybacking technology, that, that's what I do. I piggyback it mm-hmm. and you use something existing and you learn like, okay, yeah, a power drill, I can connect that to a hairdryer and I can spin something around and blow something at the same time. Wow. Yeah, but if you want to do all that, that takes like time. Besides creating that beautiful dress or that extraordinary object that connects the body with the outside world and you would also want to do something with technology, they can never do it all. No, but there's so they need to hook up no, with other people, I think. There's some students who would want to go that path and experiment and go, and other, other designers would like to work with a big company. Do you work with fashion it. designers? Um, not yet. She will after okay, today. Well, that's an invitation, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Thank Marga. You. Thank, Thank you, you Lucy, great. for your great... Really inter- really wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I have to say something. If you want to check this show, people uh, on the other side of the camera, you can go to Facebook, uh, Firestarters NL, or follow us, Twitter, at Firestarters NL. Um, you can watch this show back. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.